Hey everyone, welcome to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I mean, Fuego here. And we're here to do another trailer reaction, but today you guys were reacting to the trailer for something that you just saw earlier today. We interviewed an actor by the name of Mark Patton. He was the uh, star of A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. Uh, so there's a lot of interesting information regarding that movie. For a long time, there was a lot of, you know, conversation in the fan community about how it's a very homoerotic movie. Yeah, lots of subtext, you yep. know, and it added a different dimension to this film than a lot of people maybe initially realized. Exactly. Yeah. And it turns out that the main character was played by, as I said, Mark Patton, who is in real life actually gay. And so we did this interview. Marsha did an awesome interview with him. I'm going to link to it at the end of this video, but he was a really great guy and he had a lot to talk about. He, in fact, was talking about this movie we are going to be reacting to, which is called Scream Queen. <laughs> so uh, this is about his story behind the scenes and stuff. Um, and uh, I'm really interested to finally watch this, and uh, let's do it. What do you think? Yeah, horror covers every span of life, man. doesn't matter what your orientation is, which is what's so awesome about it. It crosses every boundary, so let's, let's do it. Exactly. So, Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. I was a golden child. I was going to be a movie star. And I remember thinking one day, thank you, Jesus, you gave me everything that I asked for. <laughs> and then the next day it all went to hell. I wake up in the middle of the first movie that I'm the lead actor in and realize that there's a gay subtext in it. A horror film only works if it taps into a paranoia in a particular time and place. Nightmare on Elm Street 2 is about the danger of not repressing enough. If he lets himself go to sleep, out comes the queer monster. And it did shut doors, this fear. And people did go back into the closet. I wasn't an out gay actor. I was a gay person, and I was living in terror. My lover was dying. People went through our trash. And my agents are waiting to see if I can play straight. That's what, what made him go a little crazy. As the reputation of this movie started to grow, it sort of became a nightmare. When I first started going to show, people would walk up to my table and tell me how much they hated the movie. Like, what are you doing here? Because of this movie, I began to feel like there was something wrong with me. You had a goal in your life to be a movie star, and you sort of got there. I think it's time that you just let it go. The movie was 30 years ago, and you're still pissed off at Dave Chaskin. I never wrote, you know, he screams like a woman, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Damn. Wow, man. Jeez. You can tell there's two warring factions in... Because this was a film that was not well-received at all when it first came out. Yeah, uh, the, uh, a, the Nightmare on Elm Street you're the, talking the, about. Yeah, exactly. The, you know, Nightmare 2. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't even think it was necessarily as much because of this subtext because people didn't really realize that at the time. They just saw that Wes Craven wasn't involved. They saw that, you know, different team, different direction, not bringing back the same characters. You know, all that we really retained was Freddy. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very different. And I think that's why more so initially people were upset about it. But as we're all so analytical in the horror community a lot of the time, I feel like there is some... I mean, maybe it was deliberate, maybe it wasn't. It's been a while since I've watched the movie, honestly. And it wasn't something that I initially picked up on as much until so many others called attention to it. Mm -hmm. um, per particularly people who are very close-minded and, you know, hate things needlessly because they want to see what they want to see. Mm -hmm. It's a film that I need to revisit, honestly, really. Yeah, How well, we, we need to watch them for the series yeah. anyway, so mm -hmm. you'll get your chance. Um, but... I am, I'm really interested in this film uh, because of the story behind it, because of the fact that it's going to be giving closure on a, on a long, you know, sort of shrouded in mystery behind the scenes of this kind of thing and, and mm -hmm. what happened afterwards yeah. to Mark and stuff like that. Well, and if the director <clears throat> and screenwriter are trying to scapegoat him like they did at the very end here, mm -hmm. you know, as if it was as if he had something to do with the fact that you put together a script that maybe wasn't you know, quite there. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'm very intrigued as well to see the warring factions. And well, know, the, yeah. I, I, I never had a problem with his performance in the film, though. You know, it, no. was the, it was the screenwriting specifically, the utilization of Freddy, the bringing him into the real world, as I think they do in that early party scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, there was just stuff that, you know, from, from a creative standpoint, 
I didn't have as much of an agreement with from the horror side of things. Like the whole humanistic side of things in his character, I never, never really, you know, thought once or twice about. So. I mean, there's there's still a lot of stuff. The screenwriter said I never said he screams like a girl, but he did say the gym teacher assaults him in the shower and gets whipped naked with a towel over and over again before getting slashed from behind by Freddy. Yeah. He wrote that. like that's, There's only so many ways that can be taken. Yeah. Make fun of the scream all you want, writer. Yeah, like, that's, but you're that's the one ridiculous. who put this together. I mean, that's maybe ridiculous. Are, are you repressed? Are you closeted a little bit, writer? Or yeah, I'm so glad <laughs> that, that Robert Englund actually took part in this film, too. Same here, man. Um, yeah. so, and, and, it, and the other guy, like you said, the producer, whoever that is, that <laughs> seems like he's confronting him directly. I didn't yeah. realize we were going to get that. No, me neither. That so makes for is... some interesting drama on camera. That's, that's really interesting to do in a documentary. We often don't get that. Yeah. Very, very visceral behind the scenes. It looks like. Yeah. It's pretty through the person that's complaining. So, yeah. No, this is a, as much as I adored uh, Never Sleep Again, I think was the long form yeah, the documentary. Yeah, four hour yeah. documentary. It's one of the best. It's I need to really, buy that. It's so, so good. This is obviously going to be exploring some of the more controversial contention mm -hmm. in, in this particular entry in the series. And once again, I think we need to rewatch it and give it some proper consideration with all of this new stuff that's come to light and stuff. I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, let us know in the comments down below what you thought of Scream Queen, My Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, this trailer looks really promising. I, I love a good documentary, and this looks like it's going to be one of the better ones. Yes, indeed. Especially about a subject that I have a huge affinity for, the Nightmare on Elm Street series. Freddy is one of my favorites of all time, so I'm all about learning more about this. And again, if you haven't watched it, watch our interview with Mark Patton. Marsha did a really good job. He's a really awesome guy. I'm going to link to it at the end of this video. But, yeah, it's, make sure you check it out because, God, the guy's awesome and I can't wait to watch this movie. Yeah, and it also opens up a topic that's been very, con very just constantly just talked about in the LGBT community lately is the fact that, you know, real-life characters playing off-type, you know, gay, gay in real life playing straight and vice versa and just the, the natural aspect of it and how tough it is sometimes and just, you know, how it, it creates, you know, just problems occasionally not in like a bad way in the fact that somebody's compromising who they are but in you know just questions of naturality and things of that nature it's 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 a very hefty topic that lots of my friends in the community have talked about mm -hmm. quite a bit and uh, a film like this is only going to stir the conversation further you know more gay characters playing gay characters in real life and, and vice versa but you know acting is about stretching yourself and you know, being something that you're not in real life a lot of the time, playing a character. And so, you know, props to, you know, Mark in this case for that, I'd say. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Yeah. So, like I said, let us know in the comments down below what your thoughts are on this. Are you excited to watch it or not and why? But until next time, I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias, I've been Fuego. And remember, stay, stay scared. scared. Ah.